I recently watched a video from Veritasium about Collot's conjecture, and I got really interested in it. Here is how it works. You take any number, and if it is an even number, you divide it by 2, and if it is an odd number, you multiply it by 3 and add 1. Then you apply the same rules to the number that you get. Here is an example. Let's start with the number 5. 5 is an odd number, so you multiply it by 3 and you add 1, which is 16. 16 is even number, so you divide it by 2 and get 8. 8 again is an even number, you divide it by 2 and get 4. 4 is an even number as well, you divide it by 2 and you get 2. 2 is an even number, you divide it by 2 get 1. And that's where the sequence stops, because the conjecture tells us that for any given number within this sequence it will eventually always reach 1. In other words, it will never shoot to infinity. This conjecture was introduced in 1937 by Lothar Kollatz and is still not yet proven. This has immediately caught my interest and I decided to learn more. I went to Wikipedia and found out that there are some visuals that clearly show some patterns. However, there are some visual exceptions on the graph, here, and here, and here, which do not immediately allow us to build some sort of formula to calculate something. This applies to all graphs in this article. But let's get back to the first graph. It proves that for any number from 1 to 9999, it takes a finite amount of steps to get to the number 1. In other words, it proves the conjecture for these numbers. However, do we really need to calculate the number of steps all the way to the number 1? Or can we simplify it? Let's review the number 10,000, which is not on this graph. We only need to prove that the number 10,000 will eventually go to any number that is below itself. Because for any other numbers, Below 10,000, we already got a proof. Once we get a proof for 10,000, we can go to 10,001 and do exactly the same thing. This means that we can actually replace this graph with a new one that shows the amount of steps for every number that takes to any number below itself. And this is exactly what I did. I wrote a script that calculates the amount of these steps paste it into a spreadsheet, and build a graph. To my own surprise, I instantly noticed some patterns. For example, any even number obviously just needs one step, because it is immediately divided by 2, which brings it to a lower number. So, it is every second number. But let's review all the numbers that require three steps. You can see that this is every fourth number. Now, let's look at the numbers that require six steps. Is every sixteenth number. The next amount of steps is eight. However, the pattern becomes more complicated. Every element of the pattern now consists of two items. But if we look at the frequency these pattern elements appear, we find out it is 32. Same applies to the next amount of steps, which is 11. The pattern element now consists of three items. However, the distance between them is 128. Do you notice anything? The distance between elements is always 2 in the power of n. This seems to be working for every amount of steps that I checked. Unfortunately, this didn't give me enough clue to build a formula to calculate the frequency for any amount of steps. Maybe this is because I'm not a mathematician, or maybe because this is impossible. Anyway, I decided to look further. I listed all the steps amounts in a table and corresponded them to an index. I then calculated the differences between each steps amounts and instantly noticed a pattern. Not only it seems that all differences are either 2 or 3, but they actually repeat. It seems that we can split the sequence into blocks, and every block will contain exactly 12 elements. Interestingly enough, 
This is exactly how the piano keyboard is built. Now, if this pattern is real, we are able to build a formula that can calculate the whole set of all possible steps amounts. Now, if this formula is correct, then it means that every amount of steps will always be a finite number, which means that conjecture is true. There is still an assumption that the Spartan is indeed never breaks. However, after investigation, I was never able to see a single stable pattern for this conjecture, so I really hope this is at least a one step forward to its proof.